Greetings, Internet. I'm Brick Road, and welcome to Let's Play Me- Wait, this is... What is this? Mega Man X. Mega Man X? Why am I playing this? Oh, because it's awesome. That's right, guys. I'm playing X4 because it's awesome. Now, the trick to making X4 awesome is to, uh, not play as X. There's nothing wrong with X, if that's what you're into. It's just that playing the game that way feels very much like playing any other Mega Man game. Zero, on the other hand, switches the game up considerably in a number of ways, not the least of which is swapping out the long-range, chargeable X-Buster for the short-range, comboable Z-Saber. If you've played this game before, you may have been relieved to note that I cut out the opening cutscene, and you'll be delighted to learn that I've gone ahead and edited out all of the cutscenes because they're hideous, full of god-awful voice acting, and it's not like this game has any plot to speak of anyway. If you absolutely, positively cannot get through your day without F- anime horn schwaggle, well, you know where the YouTube search box is, I'm sure there's a Zero fangirl or two out there who has uploaded them all, or, failing that, slapped together a quote-unquote music video with some remix J-pop or Evanescence. Wow, that sounded really bitter. Okay, look, I'll come clean. I think Zero is an unspeakably idiotic character. His backstory is 10% fan service and 90% smoke and mirrors. He looks exactly like every other stoic anime swordsman with long, flowing hair. His personality is... Actually, I don't think he has a personality. The point is that I love Zero because he is a monumentally fun character to play as, not because I have a hard-on for mysterious pasts and laser swords. So let's talk a bit about X4. If you're familiar with my other Let's Plays, you'll know that me and Mega Man go way back. Me and him is homies from the short pants days. I've always been highly critical of the X series, though. The first one was good. It added some gameplay quirks, like dashing and kicking up walls. The second was better, in my opinion. More streamlined. More fun just to pick up and play. But then X3 came along, and it became apparent that solid, polished gameplay was no longer a priority in this series. Without getting into specifics, the game just makes you jump through a lot of unnecessary hoops. I found it tedious and lacking in charm, too bogged down in its own drama. Skipping ahead to X5 and beyond, you see the logical extension of all that. Blatantly broken games that thwart any attempts to have fun with them. In the middle, though, you have X4, and more to the point, you have Zero and his saber. For the first time since the late 80s, the Mega Man series gave us something truly fresh and invigorating. See, Zero just can't kill one boss with his saber and then follow a chain of weaknesses to the endgame. Nor can he stand a screen away from his enemies and fire shots at them. If you want to get good at X4, you learn to master the saber, which means you get up close and personal with monsters you've spent the past dozen games keeping your distance from. It's flashy, it's powerful, and above all, just darn satisfying. Just try not to pay too much attention to all this talky-talky cutscene nonsense. This is the plot. Evil robots are still in one piece, and they shouldn't be. Get your laser sword and get to work. By the way, I edited out the loading screens, too. And with that, let's meet our Mavericks. Obvious boss is obvious. Web Spider, the fashionable Cyber Peacock. Hilariously pronounced Storm Owl. Fan favorite Magma Dragoon. Rockin' the vehicle level Jet Stingray. Pizza Topping, Split Mushroom, Soft and Cuddly Slash Beast, and bringing up the big fat rear, Frost Walrus. Who will Zero dismantle first? Find out in the next episode.